Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the Mob of the Dead Easter Egg solo and co-op, but there are going to be a couple things you need to do if you want to do this solo. Firstly, if you want to do this Easter Egg solo, you will have to download and install Plutonium and set up Black Ops 2 with Plutonium, and you will also have to install the solo Easter Egg mod itself, and I will have both of these linked down in the description. I will also have steps written down in the description for how to install the solo mod into your game files. I've mentioned before that I will make a more dedicated video on how to install these solo mods into the game files, but for now, just look down in the description. One more quick thing before we get started with the easter egg, if you did want to do this easter egg solo, you don't have to install the solo mod, you can do everything all the way up until the last step. So this mod actually only allows you to complete the last step, and that's the only thing it's needed for. If you don't mind doing the last step or doing everything up until that point, then you don't have to install this mod. Also, when you spawn in playing solo, you will get three afterlives, and each time you use one, you will lose it, but the next round you will get it back, and the max you can have at one time is three. Also, when picking up parts in solo, you can carry as many as you want at one time. You don't have to go back and forth and keep building stuff. Now we can jump into the first step, and the first step is going to be getting the Warden's Key, which can spawn in one of two different locations, right in front of the cafeteria or right in front of the Warden's office. In order to actually get the key, you will have to jump into afterlife mode, and on either side of whichever spawn, there's going to be a door that you will see only in afterlife mode that you can jump through and follow the path to an actual generator to shock it and you can get the key to drop down and pick it up. In order to get into afterlife mode there's going to be these red electrical boxes scattered around the map and they're pretty easy to see and you'll just go up to it and hold the action button in order to get into afterlife mode. In order to exit afterlife mode go back to where you shocked yourself originally and just revive yourself. Once you've picked up the warden's key you can jump into step two which is going to be finding all five of the different plane parts scattered around the map. I'm going to go into more detail on how to pick these up right now because some of these plane parts have more dedicated steps and ways to get them than others. The first part is going to be the shirt and that's going to be found inside of the showers and that's going to be right next to the cafeteria. In order to open up the showers you are going to need to go into afterlife mode and shock another electrical box and if you just follow this exact path that I'm taking you here you should be able to do it. Normally you would have to jump through this maze of different obstacles but with this shortcut you can just walk inside of the doorway in afterlife mode, jump up and shock at the same time and you should hit the electrical panel. Now you can revive yourself and then you can run down into the showers and run to the end of the room where you can see the dryer and just unlock the door with the warden's key. Now go back into afterlife mode and shock the power across from the dryer. And I will say too that there's going to be a lot of jumping back and forth between afterlife mode and human form throughout this easter egg. Go ahead and re-enter human form and then go start the dryer. At that point it's going to start a lockdown and you can't leave that room until the dryer has finished doing what it's doing. A bunch of zombies are going to spawn for the lockdown and once the lockdown's over you can go pick up the sheet and that's going to be the first part to the plane. The next three parts are going to be around the docks area and the first of the three parts is going to be around the spiral staircase leading to the docks. This part is going to be the wiring or the rope. When you reach the bottom of the spiral staircase there's going to be a locked box with three numbers being displayed and some control panels inside. Go ahead and unlock it with the warden's key and then run all the way back up to the top of the spiral staircase. Go ahead and enter afterlife mode and then run all the way back down to the bottom and as you'll notice in afterlife mode on the left side on the walls you will see three numbers being displayed that you can only see in afterlife mode. Go ahead and shock those three numbers inside of the control panels to display those numbers on top. Once you've done that you can go ahead and revive yourself and then you can run to this area of the map just below where you input the three numbers and press on this door to open it and you can pick up the wiring inside. The next part is going to be the engines which is going to be inside of the warden's office but before you can actually go pick it up you need to do a couple of things. First, you actually need to open up the warden's office, so if you jump in this hole in afterlife, you can then run around this corner and you can actually shock the electrical box in order to open the door. Once you've made it inside the warden's office, you'll notice that there's going to be a door to the right side that is electrified and you need to make sure the electricity is off. So in order to do that, you now need to run all the way down to the docks. Once you've made it down to the docks in the room just before going outside, there's going to be a bunch of electrical panels and there's going to be three that are turned on. 
You need to go into afterlife mode and shock all three of them in order to get the electricity on the door to turn off. Once you've done that, you can make your way back up to the warden's office in human form and you can unlock the door, go inside, and pick up the engines. The next part is going to be the oxygen tanks, and for those, you need to go down to the docks and unlock this gate with the warden's key. Once you've unlocked the gate, you can go into afterlife mode and shock this electrical panel inside of the gate, and then you can revive yourself and go pick up the part. In co-op, this part is a little bit different. You need to have one player standing inside of the gate after it's been unlocked and have another player go and shock the panel to open up the second gate. If you don't do this immediately after unlocking the gate and shocking the panel, the gate will just close immediately after. There needs to be a player standing near it. For the fifth and final part, you can go up to the roof and unlock this cabinet and just pick up the part. There's no additional steps for this one. Now you can build the plane, but before you can actually build the plane, you need to open up the door to the roof. And in order to do that, just enter afterlife mode and follow this path all the way up until you reach the control panel and shock it. Once you've shocked it, the door should open. Go ahead and build the plane, but don't ride the plane just yet. First, you need to do a couple of things back inside the prison. Firstly, you need to get the Hell's Retriever or the Tomahawk. You need to find three dog heads around the map. The first one is gonna be in the middle of this cell block. The second one is gonna be on the docks on this wall. And the third one is gonna be just underneath the roof, right where you can pick up the final plane part. When you kill a zombie next to each one of the symbols, a giant hellhound head is gonna spawn in right on the wall where the symbol was. Each dog head needs to be filled up with a total of six zombie souls, including the one you first killed to spawn in the dog head. Once you've filled up all three of the dog heads, you can go pick up the Hell's Retriever, which is gonna be in this area of the map, just outside of the showers. Now that you have the Hell's Retriever, you need to go find five blue skulls hidden around the map, which is needed to get a free blunder gat from the warden's office, and you need to get this blunder gat in order to progress through the Easter egg. You won't be able to actually see the skulls until you hit them with the Hell's Retriever, but they're just going to be in this general location that you need to actually throw the Hell's Retriever at. So here are the five locations now. Just outside of spawn, inside of the cell with an actual skull inside of it. On this corner of the roof at the very back left. On the docks facing the water on this pillar right here. Also on the docks in front of Jug on this light post right here. This one is a little bit finicky and you might need to try multiple times. Just aim it right at the top of the light post. And finally in the warden's office outside of this window on the telephone pole. Once you've gotten all five, go to this desk in the warden's office and you will see a bunch of fire on top of it with the blunder gat coming up out of the desk. Go ahead and pick it up and then you can upgrade it and turn it into the acid gat. The acid gat is not required for this easter egg, but it is really helpful and I do suggest turning it into the acid gat, but it is 100% not required. To turn it into the acid gat, you need to find three parts scattered around the map and each part is going to have three different spawn locations. The first part is going to be in the infirmary, just on this table right here. The second location is going to be on the left side of this bathtub. And the third part is going to spawn in this room next to these two bathtubs. The next part is going to be in the warden's office to the left of the fireplace, to the left of the mystery box location, and to the right of the Uzi wall by. The final part can spawn just outside of spawn where you picked up one of those blue skulls, underneath the stairs next to where you can buy the B23R, and in this corner just outside of the showers. Take all of the pieces to a workbench and build them. I recommend using the workbench right next to the electric cherry perk. Once built, place the blunder gat in the acid gat converter, wait a couple of seconds, and then you can pick it back up. Now you're able to go ride the plane. So go all the way back up to the roof, board the plane, and wait for it to take you to the Golden Gate Bridge. Once you get there, Pack-A-Punch will be there, and you can do whatever you need to do while you're there until the electric chairs spawn. Once the electric chairs spawn, you need to go activate them, and it will bring you back to the map in afterlife mode, and you just need to revive your character. Now you need to wait one round, and once one round has passed, you need to go refuel the plane. There's still going to be five parts, but all of them are going to be fuel canisters, and you just need to go pick them up in the exact same locations as where you found the original five parts. All of the locations are going to be the same except for where you picked up the wiring, and that will just be in front of the three numbers that you can zap in afterlife mode. Other than that, all of the other gas canisters are going to be in the exact same location as where you picked them up previously. You're going to have to refuel the plane two times. So each time, you're just going to refuel the plane, go to the Golden Gate Bridge, come back, wait around, and then go find all the refuel canisters again and do it one more time. So you do need to go to the Golden Gate Bridge for a total of three times with two of the three times refueling with the gas canisters. 
Now, any time after your first trip to the Golden Gate Bridge, you can do this next step. So you can do it after the first time, after the second time, or after the third time. It doesn't matter, you just need to at least go once before you can do this. Take the Hell's Retriever over to this cell in front of the warden's office and throw it at this poster. Once you've done that, go into afterlife mode and enter this hole in the wall and shock this spoon that's laying on the floor next to this big crack in the floor. Now you need to revive yourself and go over to the cafeteria and look in this window right here. On the left side, there's going to be a table with the spoon sitting on top of it. Just go ahead and throw your Hell's Retriever at it and you should get the spoon, which is actually now going to be your melee weapon. Once you've gotten the spoon and you've taken the plane a total of three times, you can move on to the next step. Now go back to the spiral staircase and enter afterlife mode. Run all the way back down to the number panel and enter these four codes, 101, 386, 872, and 481. Chances are when entering the codes, you might need to actually do this in two different afterlifes because you only have a limited time and after each code is input, it takes a second for the next code to be ready to be put in. If you're playing solo, this is why the mod is important for this exact step right here. Once you input the four codes, a bot will spawn into the map and you will need to go find five different power-ups scattered around the map. There's technically going to be six, but the first one will play right after you revive yourself from entering the fourth code. Each one you pick up is going to play dialogue for more lore of the map. The first one is going to be at the top of the spiral staircase in the middle of this staircase going towards the main prison. The next one is going to be right in front of Double Tap. The next one will be on the catwalk going towards the showers. After that is going to be at the entrance going towards the infirmary. And the final one will be in this doorway on the roof. After you've listened to all the dialogue on the final one, you then need to go into afterlife mode and board the plane in afterlife mode. For this step, you will not have to refuel the plane again. It should automatically be refueled. When you reach the Golden Gate Bridge, you need to revive yourself inside of the electric chair and your other player will need to do the exact same thing. If you're playing in solo, then you will also have to revive the bot inside of the electric chair. Once you've done that, it's going to be a straight up multiplayer lobby up in this game. If you're playing in co-op, but you have a total of four players, it's going to be a 3v1 with three players fighting the weasel. So whoever is the weasel is going to have more health and is going to be able to survive a lot longer because zombies will also not follow and chase you. If the three players actually manage to kill weasel, the cycle will continue and that's not the canon ending. The canon ending is when the cycle breaks and the weasel kills the other three players. Don't worry though, because you don't actually need to have three players. You can still do this co-op with just two players and it would just be a 1v1, but either way, weasel would still have the advantage. If you're doing this solo, the bot's not going to move, so you can just kill the bot. If you're playing as Weasel again, the cycle will break and that's the canon ending. But if you're not playing as Weasel and the bot happens to be Weasel, then the cycle will continue. But anyway, that's the Mob of the Dead Easter Egg. And when you complete it, the game will end telling you which version of the Easter Egg you've done. So it'll say cycle continues or cycle is broken. In this map, you will only get an achievement if you break the cycle, and the achievement is called Pop Goes the Weasel. You will also get two other achievements just by passively completing steps in the Easter Egg called Making the Rounds and No One Escapes Alive. I really want to thank each of you for watching this video today, and if you found it at all helpful, let me know down in the comments. And for my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to do the Buried Easter Egg solo and co-op. So I'll see you all in that video, but until then, have a good one.